Top tips for applying to Oxbridge. My name is Jenny McGowan. I'm the Director of Asia for Keystone Tutors and every year we help many students apply to top UK universities and many of which apply to Oxbridge. The aim of this presentation is to go through the timeline of applying to UK universities, what the application requirements are, choosing a course and how to go about that, and then finally how to prepare for an Oxbridge application and we share our top tips that we know have worked for many students in the past. So starting with the timeline, it's important that you consider where your child is at school at the moment and when they would be applying to UK University. So year 12 and 13 are the final two years of school and your university application is made in the autumn of year 13, so one year before you will start university. In reality, most students will start preparing throughout year 12. Often the summer of year 11 is a key time for students once they've finished their GCSEs to think about universities and start that preparation process. The application itself is made through a website called UCAS, which is a centralised application system that students use to apply for all UK universities. It has four main sections, personal details, of which much is kind of name, address and basic information, your course choices, so which courses you are applying for at which universities, your school or college reference, so your teachers or tutors will write subject references for what you're studying and a general reference that details your kind of how you are as a student. You have to list your previous qualifications gained, so that could be GCSEs if you are in a British school or it could be a local equivalent and also your pending qualifications. So what are you currently studying? Maybe A-levels, maybe IB, and your teachers will have to predict grades for you. So saying what they think you will get at the end of sixth form. You also write a personal statement, which is a one page kind of A4 typed document, which is the only bit really that the student gets to influence and write themselves. Most of the rest of the UCAS application is administrative really. You get five choices in a single UCAS application, which is per year. And one of those five choices could be Oxford or Cambridge. You cannot apply to both of those options. Now, for most courses at most universities, the UCAS form is it. That is what you submit and that is what universities make their decisions on. However, there are additional requirements for some courses at some universities and also for Oxbridge. So entrance assessments will be a, an added academic test that you will be asked to take. Now that could be in something very specific such as physics, it could be a thinking skills assessment that is looking at logic and problem solving. Which entrance test you have to take very much depends on which course you are applying to at which university. Most Oxbridge courses will have an assessment of some form and some courses at other universities may also have this courses like medicine and law being examples of those. Further to that, there may be an interview. So for Oxbridge, all courses will require an interview. Most students will take that at Oxford or Cambridge, so they will travel to the university to take it. However, in previous years, um, Cambridge has set up international interviews in China and Singapore and Hong Kong um, and also Oxford has done some interviews on Skype. Some courses at other universities may require that too. Again, things like medicine is very common to have an interview, but a lot of courses won't have an interview. And again, as I mentioned earlier, your UCAS form is about it. So 
Choosing the right course is very important when you're applying to university more generally, but more specifically for Oxford and Cambridge. And that's because there's actually quite a narrow selection of courses to choose from compared to other universities. And therefore, it's important that you get that choice right. This will help your application hugely, because if you haven't selected a course that you are truly passionate or interested in, that's going to show very quickly in the application process and you are less likely to be offered a place. So how should you start to choose a course? Firstly, think about what you're studying at the moment. So your current A-level or IB subjects, is there one of those that you particularly enjoy and are particularly passionate about? Do you have an intended career path? So some degrees will be more vocational, things like law and medicine being examples of that. But equally, maybe you're very interested in finance um, and therefore maybe economics and management might be a good choice for you. The key thing really is, are you genuinely interested beyond what you've studied at school? Because at at Oxford, you're going to study this course for three years in a lot of depth and a lot of detail. And you have to be genuinely interested in what that course involves rather than just choosing it because you might like something you're currently studying. You need to do quite a bit more research than that. Keystone describes it as there being three broad course kind of groups to choose from. So arts and humanities, which will be things like English, classics, history, um, music and philosophy. Social sciences, which would be economics, education, law, political science. And then the STEM, the science and maths based degrees, which are things like biological sciences, computer science, maybe medicine, psychology. So if you're unsure, these big groups would be a good place to start. And then narrowing down within that, which course really does appeal to you. Something else to consider might be how competitive that course is at Oxford or Cambridge. Both universities are very transparent with their data and every year they publish how many applicants there were for every course, how many offers they gave and therefore what the success rate is. Now this shouldn't dictate your choice in its entirety because of course you have to be genuinely interested and passionate in the course but it might influence you if there are two courses that you're unsure about, maybe if one is very competitive you might have a better chance of getting in to a less competitive one, assuming that you are still very much interested in that course. And there are some numbers here to show you. So at Oxford, the most competitive course is economics and management, where for every one place, there are around 15 applicants. And at Cambridge, their most competitive course is computer science. Um, And sometimes this does change year on year, but these numbers generally are pretty stable um, as courses are kind of a similar popularity each year. So how do you then prepare for your application and give yourself the best chance at winning a place at either Oxford or Cambridge? And at Keystone, we're real big believers in guided reading and going above and beyond what you're studying at school. And this will help you with all the remaining parts of which the personal statement entrance tests and the interview, which I'm going to come on to, but guided reading kind of underpins all of your preparation, really. So what do we mean by guided reading? What we mean is is that you're exploring themes and ideas that kind of underpin the subject that you've chosen. And normally that is going to be beyond what you're studying at school. So if you're studying history at school, guided reading should involve other historical periods or maybe other authors or writers that you maybe haven't come across before. You're trying to expose yourself to as much new information as possible to reflect and evaluate that to make sure that you genuinely are interested but also are thinking about that subject in a very academic way which is what Oxford and Cambridge are looking for. It's also a good idea to identify a couple of areas of specific interest that you have within the broader course and almost to become an expert in those areas as best you can. And the reason for that is that then you can write about that in your personal statement, you can talk about it at interview, you're you're being able to have an academic conversation on an area that you're kind of choosing to have by, by gaining this knowledge. 
In addition to, to reading, it's also important to engage with recent developments, especially if you're in like a science area, is that actually these areas are very quickly moving on, research is changing all the time. So it's important that you're keeping up to date with online articles, so reading things like BBC News, The Economist, of course within the relevant subject area that you're taking. There's also plenty of videos online, so TED Talks are great for listening to alternative views and maybe being challenged on what you think and new ways of thinking about things. Podcasts, again, lots of universities have great podcasts and these are things you can download on your phone and you can listen to when you're commuting or on your way places, so you can fit these things in around your day. There are also lots of online lectures, um, again, from lots of universities where they will publish um, public lectures or even sometimes lectures that are for modules um, as part of their degrees and those are useful because it gives you an insight to what's going on at those universities. Of course this can be quite challenging for students that maybe don't know where to start or potentially are unsure of what course they are looking at or maybe it just struggle with motivation and so actually at Keystone we kind of have guided reader reading programs which we use for various different courses but they're designed for what your interests are and I've given an example here on this slide where this is a philosophy um, kind of guided reading program where you would be sent things to read and then you would have a weekly discussion with a tutor who is an expert in that field and it's, an, it's a way for you to have those kind of high level discussions and start to develop your ideas which ultimately are going to help you both with your personal statement and at interview. So let's think about the, the personal statement for a little bit, because when you submit your UCAS form, this is really the only bit that, that you can personalise and tailor to, to your specific situation. So therefore, it's the differentiating factor for most universities, because if you're not applying for Oxford or Cambridge, the personal statement is pretty much all that they see. And it's your opportunity to stand out and show why you are suited to that course. They're read by admissions tutors at the universities. These will often be lecturers that teach that subject um, and they'll be trained to do this and they will read hundreds of personal statements each year and it's very easy for them to pick out kind of good ones and bad ones because they read so many. So it's being re read by somebody that is trained to do this. What should be in it? The main overarching part of your personal statement is that you're trying to demonstrate that you are genuinely interested in that subject. How you do that could be through things that you've read, so talking about your reading, reflecting on that. Maybe it's that you've got different activities or courses you've done, but ultimately you have to reflect and evaluate on those different activities. Simply listing them isn't enough. You need to explain what you've learned from that, what you've gained from it. Why has that led you to study this course at university? Now, of course, you also can mention work experience internships you've done, maybe any achievements that are outside of academia, maybe in terms of leadership skills and so on. But for an Oxbridge personal statement, it's important that they are all relevant to the course that you're applying to do. So ideally, they would be in the same academic subject. Um, they're less interested in your extracurriculars in terms of sport and things, but you can include that. It just would be less than if you were applying to other universities that maybe were more interested in those kind of extracurricular activities. How to start? It can be quite tricky to start writing your personal statement and many students get a bit stuck at this stage. So you can start quite early by when you are reading or doing online courses or watching your TED Talks, as we talked about earlier, keep notes of those things. What was interesting? Why did you like that? Why did you maybe disagree with something somebody said? And those notes will then help you hugely when you come to write your personal statement because they can form the basis of it for you. In addition to that, you can make a list of relevant activities and experiences. So if you are doing work experience or an internship or maybe running a club at school, just keep lists of them so that you don't forget. It may be that a lot of them are irrelevant and they don't go into the personal statement, but it's better to have them all written down in case they are relevant. Start with bullet points as well. Just get something written in sentences, 
doesn't need to be in paragraphs. And then what you'll find is that you'll start to work out which bits can flow into other sections, but always just start writing. Even if it's not good, you can then edit or delete it once you've got more written. In terms of helping you with this, your tutors and teachers at school or the, your university advisor should be providing you guidance on your personal statements, asking for drafts, checking it and giving you feedback. Um, you could also do that with your peers. So with friends, if you're applying for similar courses, it might be worth having a look at what they're doing and just getting parents to have a second check as well. The more people that you can have guidance from, they might have a little snippet of information that is actually very helpful. There are also external websites. So the UCAS website has a very clear guide on what should be in your personal statement. The Witch University website is similar, but it's an external um, company rather than being UCAS themselves. And also on the Oxbridge websites, both Oxford and Cambridge have pages on the personal statement and what they expect which can be slightly different from other universities. As I mentioned earlier, it needs to be a bit more academic and they will explain that to you on their website. So do take a look at that. Talking now about entrance assessments, which is another part of an Oxbridge application for most courses, not all courses, but for most of them. There are two types of these tests, either pre-interview which are normally taken in late October or early November. And then at interview assessments, which would be taken whilst you're having your interview in December. So Oxford generally use pre-interview assessments, whereas Cambridge use half pre-interview and half at interview, roughly. Now, what these assessments will involve will vary hugely depending on what you're applying for. So do check the course page. So if it's maths, go on to the maths page and look at the admissions requirements and it will tell you what entrance tests they want you to, to take. Do check the websites because actually they often share an awful lot of information. There may be a syllabus, there will be specimen papers, there might be previous year papers, there will be reports maybe that will detail the strengths and weaknesses of the previous year's applicants. There's a lot of information out there, so do make sure that you have a look at that because it's there to guide you. With all these things, you can get help with this as well. So again, at Keystone, we have lots of very experienced tutors that can help with all sorts of different entrance assessments for Oxbridge. So if you feel like you need some external help, then you can certainly organise that. The final part then of an Oxbridge application is the interview. Now, if you've had a, done the entrance assessment, often that entrance assessment will determine whether you are invited to interview or not. So it might be that you took the assessment and based off your UCAS form as well, they decided not to invite you to interview, whereas if you have been invited for interview, then that's great because it proves that your academic level has actually been regarded very highly until now. And therefore, the interview process is very important because everybody that has got to interview has the academic background and the kind of prowess that they're looking for. Whereas then at interview, it's about getting to know you as a student and making sure that you would kind of suit the Oxbridge environment, that you're willing to engage in debates and discussions about various topics. And so the interview often can be the determining factor if the rest of your application was very strong. Again, read the guidance provided. So both Oxford and Cambridge have sections on their website that will tell you what the interview process is like. It will vary course by course. So do make sure you're reading the specific guidance. For example, some courses will give you something to read before the interview, and then the interview will be based on that piece of writing. Others will be, there'll be no preparation for you to do. So do check the guidance that, that is there and that they send you when they invite you to interview. There are also lots of YouTube videos out there. So Oxford and Cambridge, again, have guides, video guides explaining how interviews work, but there are also lots of students over the years that have gone through these interviews themselves that have then made videos to help students. So do have a look at those, they can be really useful to give you an idea of the types of questions that might be asked. 
Reviewing your personal statements is very important. It is likely at interview that they will ask you elements of your personal statement. And that might be that they're going to challenge you on what you've said. Maybe they want to know more detail about something you've commented on. So if you've written something in your personal statement that you do not know inside out and cannot defend, maybe think about taking it out or make sure that you read up around that before you go to interview because it can be quite embarrassing to fall down at interview on something that you've actually written. Um, it's not a, not a good impression to make. Then lots of practice. So the guided reading programs that I mentioned earlier are great practice for interview because what that's doing is it's exposing you to new information, having high level conversations with a tutor who is guiding you through this process. Ultimately, that helps with the interview because that's exactly the types of conversations you would have at interview. But it's also important to have mock interviews with unknown people um, because your tutor by that point will know you very well. So you need to have a mock interview with somebody that you've never met before so that they're asking you questions not based on any preconceived ideas about you and also for you to respond to somebody that you're unfamiliar with. Again, at Keystone, we have lots of tutors that can do those mock interviews for you, either in person if you're in the UK, or we do them online for students that are abroad. Ultimately, the interview should flow out of your guided reading. It should be just an extended conversation based on what you've read, your passion, your interest, your genuine desire to study that course, which is why it all kind of circles back to course choice you need to really want to study that course. And if you've picked a course because your parents maybe think it's a good idea or you think it's the easier one to get into, often then an interview you're going to fall down because you simply aren't genuinely interested in that course, which is what they're looking for. So those are the different sections of an Oxbridge application. And I've given you there some kind of top tips and ideas on how to prepare for those different sections. And my contact details are here. So I provide kind of consultations for students applying for various different courses. And so if you feel like you need any more information or would just like to have a brief chat, do get in touch and we'd be very happy to organise that for you.